uh, on behalf of Ms. Dawson. And Ms. Dawson is, is here, not because she wanted to be here. She's here because she was attacked. Um, she was traumatized. And uh, there are a lot of people that are gonna need to be held responsible for this. And I wanna start by having one of the attorneys from our law firm, attorney Ed Jones, to describe for you all, to set the stage as to what led to this. Because it's important that um, this September 3rd, 2022, that night is placed into some context. And it is not just, it didn't just come um, out of the clear blue sky. So attorney Jones is going to provide some context and then we'll, we'll talk more about what happened um, to Ms. Dawson specifically. Attorney Jones. Thank you, Attorney Davis. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, since the, the coronavirus pandemic rocked our nation and our world, we've, as human beings, have had to make some adjustments. Industries have made adjustments as well, uh, in particular, in the, as it relates to this particular case, uh, we're dealing with the fast food industry and they have made adjustments um, in the wake of the, of the pandemic. Um, you probably can, can, will notice uh, wherever you go, you, there are enhanced drive-throughs at fast food restaurants all over our city, all over our, our state and our country. Um, what has happened is the fast food industry had to adapt to the conditions that were created by this pandemic as everyone did. Uh, the focus, that, that, that adjustment manifested in figuring out or trying to figure out at least how to serve customers in a way that was, that limited contact. Uh, what has also happened though is that focus on serving customers through drive-throughs, for instance, um, minimize contact, but the, but the industry put a focus, a, a, priority, uh, a priority on serving as many customers through drive-throughs as they possibly could, but with the least amount of time involved. Uh, this resulted in enormous pressure being put on employees at these restaurants. They're, these fast food employees are constantly pushed, uh, they're monitored and, and, and required to minimize the time that customers are waiting in the drive throughs And what happens is that they're operating under this enormous pressure to move the line, move the car line, don't let the backup build. As we're all, we're all citizens here um, of, of this great state of Georgia. And the law in Georgia requires every citizen to conduct themselves in a reasonable manner so as not to injure anyone else. Corporations are not exempt. They're actually considered citizens of this state as well. And they are also required to act in a way that prevents uh, uh, their conduct from injuring someone else. Unfortunately, the corporation that owns the Popeyes Louisiana uh, Chicken uh, Store located on Cleveland Avenue here in our city of Atlanta failed in its responsibility and its duty to act reasonably um, in its conduct of business. What do we expect of corporations in our state? We expect that they will make hires and do at least due diligence in order to uh, hire qualified individuals to serve on their behalf, but individuals who will not in turn harm the public, especially those that are on the, on the business, on the property of that business to conduct business. Today we have filed a lawsuit um, against the 755 Restaurant Corporation, which owns that Popeyes located on Cleveland Avenue, as well as several of the employees or former employees of that Popeyes location. This is what caused us to, to, to file suit against 
this corporation and Popeyes in this instance. Popeyes failed to do the most basic background check on several of these employees, which could have alerted them as to the danger that they presented that ultimately resulted in the, in the catastrophic injuries to our client. I want to introduce you and show you a picture now of one of the employees that has been named in this lawsuit that was a formal employee of this Popeye's restaurant. In fact, uh, she was hired as a manager at the location. Her name is Tanister Evans. With a simple background check, prior to hiring this woman at Popeye's, Popeye's would have realized and found information that showed in 2013, she was convicted of assault. In 2016, another conviction of assault and multiple other criminal convictions. If they didn't, even if Popeye's didn't want to spend the money to do a background check, and, and I would say we did a very simple check. Putting her name in a Google search yielded this information, these pictures, showing that she had been convicted. Yet and still, she was allowed to, to not only be hired at that Popeye's location, but be a manager there. Under the pressure cooker that has been created, by the fast food industry and, and, and including this Popeye's location, putting the wrong type of people in position to interact, not only interact with, with the public, but to also be a manager over other employees in that location resulted in a dangerous, very dangerous situation. I'm going to turn I'm it over to, Mr. to Attorney Davis. I want us to um, I want us to keep our focus on Popeyes, right? This location and this Popeyes created a set of circumstances that Attorney Jones explained, and the set of circumstances resulted in Ms. Dawson being seriously injured. Let me explain what happened on that day. On September third, the evening of, Ms. Dawson went out to simply get. What many families get is just a, a, a box of chicken. Literally, she went out to get a box of chicken, a box of Popeyes for the family. And she went to go get this 12 piece box of chicken. And what ends up happening is that they get the order wrong. She tries to correct them over the speaker. They're not paying any attention. She pulls up to the window at the window. She's trying to communicate, hey, you got this wrong. They're, they get upset. They call her the B word. They start raising their voice. She's sitting there trying to get it corrected. As Attorney Jones explained, this drive through is timed. These workers are timed. Their efficiency and how they're rated is based on the drive through timing. And so as she's sitting there trying to work through this with people who clearly are poorly trained as it relates to customer service, they come out. They come out of the restaurant. She is, remains in her car and their objective in the furtherance of Popeye's business, their objective is to get her to move her car so that they can keep the line moving so that they don't get in trouble with Popeye's their employer and so they come out they begin yelling she's trying to still get the order corrected one of the employees physically opens up her passenger side car door enters her vehicle jumps into her car and begins to attack her two other employees including the manager then open up her car door and they're all converging on her, beating her, punching her, scratching her, uh, attempting to choke her. They're full-blown attack mode with three Popeye's employees in uniform in the drive-thru. 
She is trying to get away, trying to control her vehicle. The only thing that ends this attack is that Miss Dawson is able to get access to her purse where she has her licensed firearm. And she's able to produce that firearm. And it's only after she produces a firearm that the assault stops. That's the only thing that stops her from continuing to be beaten. And thankfully, she has enough presence of mind Although we believe she would have been well within her legal rights to discharge that firearm. She did not. She did not. She brandished it to stop them. They stopped. And then she called the police. The police came out. They investigated. And they arrested all three of those individuals who attacked her that night. One of them, they had to charge with obstruction of an officer. And that one was, in fact, Miss Tanister Evans, who had been previously arrested and was the manager. They, the manager of the Popeyes, was arrested for obstruction of an officer because she was unwilling to comply even after they have come there to provide aid and assistance to Miss Dawson. Miss Dawson has to go to the emergency room that night. She doesn't get to go home to take food to her, her children. She ends up having to go to the emergency room that night. She continues to be treated. Um, she has had to endure the loss. Um, they literally ripped her hair from the roots of her head. And this is what the scene looked like. This is what the scene looked like. Her car with food strewn about as they had come out to attack, not to just complete her order, but they come out in attack mode. And this is what the parking, this is the evidence. This is a, a, a photo that captures it. And then when they got into the vehicle, here's what they did to her. They, they ripped out the braid out of her hair all the way down to the root. This is a mother who works every day to take care of her children, who thought that by going to Popeye's, she would just be able to go get dinner for her children, bring it home. And instead, this is what happens to her. And the troubling part is that She's had to try to recover her hair. She's had to try to regrow this hair and go through the loss. And as a man, I, I, I often speak with my wife and, and other family members about the woman's hair is her crown. And they clearly attacked her personhood when they ripped her hair out. After they did it, they talked about it. They recovered and they saw her braid that they had ripped out and they said, we ripped that bee's braid out of her head. That's what she got at Popeye's. That was the experience that she had when she was at Popeye's was that after they finished, and they're out there in the parking lot as she waited for the police for help. They were bragging about what they had done to her. And that's what she's gone through. And we believe that under the circumstances, this was absolutely foreseeable by Popeyes. That they, had they done a simple criminal background check, they would have known that to put a person like Miss Evans in the position of management, and then her daughter and her sister, all a part of this same a group that were working on that, they were part of the same shift, that this was bound to happen to someone with the pressure that these uh, workers are under. And I, I wanna be very clear, our law firm is a social justice law firm, and what that means for us is that we're a law firm of second chances. And so we hire folks. 
we employ, we do um, internships with people who have criminal backgrounds. And so we don't want this in any way to suggest that corporations should not be hiring people who have criminal backgrounds. To the contrary, not only should we look to hire all of our citizens, but we are required to train them and prepare them so that they can make a transition into the workplace in a way that can be beneficial to all and not detrimental to the customers that they have put all kinds of marketing dollars towards saying that they are going, they are here to, to serve. Um, this is a, a lawsuit that we hoped we didn't have to file, but here we are. Um, we'll provide you all with a copy of it. I want, before Ms. Dawson shares, I do want to show you, this is Ms. Dawson before. This beautiful mom, daughter, sister, who just, again, out to get dinner for her, her family, for her children. And um, that's, that smile, that confidence. Unfortunately, she's been robbed of that because of this attack. I know that there'll be people who um, will attempt to minimize. Well, it's just hair. It was much, much bigger than, than her hair being ripped out. It was the very sense that she thought she might not make it home to her children for something as simple as going to get Popeyes and try to correct your order. Um, the individuals were arrested, and obviously that's process we're going through with Ms. Dawson as she's prepared to show up for every court date to ensure that um, what happened to her is addressed in the criminal context. But it's important that the corporate actor in this, the Popeyes, is also held accountable. And the only way that we know how to do that is through uh, civil litigation, which is why um, Attorney Jones and our firm and I we filed this lawsuit on Ms. Dawson's behalf. Um, Ms. Dawson is going to make a very short um, statement, and then, um, then myself and Attorney Jones will take questions, but she won't be able to take, take any questions this afternoon. Good afternoon. I want to thank you guys for coming. First, I would like to thank my family, my therapists, and the lawyers for standing beside me. On this night, I simply went to get food for my kids. I didn't, I still don't understand this, like, why me? I didn't even think I was gonna make it back to my kids. I shared location with my kids and that's how it was found. I'm sorry, y'all. It's okay. Um, like my lawyer said, it took my identity. I take pride in my hair. I can't get certain hairstyles. Um, I hid this for my kids. They don't even know about this. They found out about it today. But I want to thank you guys for coming again. And I know I'll get through this. I just pray that this, what happened to me, don't happen to no one else, and I get the proper justice and bring some light to my situation so it won't happen to no one else. We do have video of the arrest of the manager from that evening that we are prepared to show um, you all whatever way is best for you to receive that information. But uh, the reason that we wanted to show a video of this arrest is to give some context so that you can see what she was dealing with. Um, as you can see, this is a petite young lady, um, not big in stature at all, and to have three um, people assaulting her um, in her car is, um, was, was without question terrifying for her and something that she's having to process and deal with.
can see it took a number of officers even to take this um, manager into, into custody. And this was, if, if police could not uh, contain her and could not get her into custody, just imagine um, the rage and the wrath that Ms. Dawson was experiencing as she engaged in this attack with the two other uh, family members who were employed by, by Popeye. 